Guy Paul Sack is good news broadcast. Speaking to a cowboy chef. Teams up with the master sommelier. Yay! Um, wow. Okay, we have uh, Tim, uh, Chef Tim Love. Which one are you, Tim? I'm right here. And are you a cowboy chef, or are you the master sommelier? I, I'm, I'm the cowboy chef. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then we have Master Brulu, uh beer sommelier. Year, uh, Belgium's Mark Dunbrock. Yes. Hi there. Hello, Mark. How are we doing this morning, doing? Paul? All right, good. So, first of all, I think that's a beer. So, I, I thought that was just a wine kind of a thing that worked, uh, which I can hardly say. Uh, sommelier. And it's master. You have master wine sommeliers, but I'm a master beer sommelier, which is at the same level. I approach beer exactly the same as you would do with the wine. I just have a little bit more fun with it. Oh, okay. All right. Interesting. And then just. In love, what do you mean, an urban western, uh, you're a cowboy chef? What does that mean? Are you, are you dressed like a cowboy when you cook, or what is that? Well, I mean, I guess you could call it that. I'm a, I'm, I was raised on a farm. I'm, I've had cattle and all kinds of different animals all my life, but uh, my food that we call urban western cuisine, we take local indigenous ingredients and we combine it with all the flavors and ethnic groups that made up the New West. All right, well, there's some wild stuff going on here. Where's Absolutely. The- I mean, where is the Wild West meets uh, Europe's best, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and you're out in Aspen, uh, Colorado. That's right. Uh, for the 27th Food uh, and Wine Classic in Aspen, and I'm sure it's gorgeous out there. Uh, oh, it's a spectacular morning this morning out here at the Food and Wine Classic in Aspen. And uh, we've really, we've got, uh, I've got three different whole animals going in three different cooking apparatuses. I've got a whole goat in the smoker here. I just pulled off a whole lamb off the rotating spit, and then I've got a whole deer over what we call the love box, which is a, it simulates cooking underground. And then we're taking those three animals and turning them into these beautiful dishes in which Mark has so graciously paired these beautiful Belgian beers with. So Mark, tell them about the beers. Well, what we did is um, great food deserves great beers. So we start off with um, the goat to Crepinette, um, and I'm putting there a um, Belgian white bear, Hoogarden, and the beer itself is slightly seasoned with coriander, some oranges, so it brings out all the flavors. It works very well with a peppery rocket. With the lamb tacos, I'm putting a Stella Artois, a Belgian lager. And I also notice that we're using different types of glasses. For so each beer in Belgium, we have different glasses. And the Stella Artois and the lamb tacos just work a treat. Um, brings out all the spicy flavors, works very well with a sweet sort of chili flavor. And to finish off, we've got Le Feblant, um, which is a great beer. It's a Belgian Abbey beer. A little bit more sweeter, which is absolutely fantastic with um, the venison. And the great thing about Tim and I want to do is just push people out of their flavor comfort zone and have fun with food, beer, and flavors. Sounds good to me. Yes. What, what is this with these Belgian beers? Tell us a little bit. I mean, a lot of times people say it's the water in certain areas, but do you think the water has some... some uh, it's everything. The it's it's the water. It, it's the expertise. It's the it's the barley, the hops, and and it's just the combination and combination of, of years and years and years of just trying to make great beers. And this is what you see. This is a result from from decennia of just people trying to get better, better, and better at it. And I must say, they got there. <laughs> great beers. Great balance in flavor. You know. So, and and they were great beers. Oh, yeah. Uh, great food beers. All sorts of beers, all different flavors. And this is fun as well with all the different types of food, and especially with Tim's food. Can't be better. Tim, with, uh, with this type of beer, uh, I, I see you're, you know, you're cooking certain kinds of meats and so on and so forth. Correct. Um, is there anything you know, that we should know about when you, when you do the cooking the, uh, that enhances the whole, the whole, opera, you know, the whole experience? Well, uh, as you said, the, the, the great thing about these beers is they're, they're a sweeter beer, so they, they pair really well with food, uh, kind of in the same way that wine does. But, you know, in cooking whole animals or ro- slow roasting meats, it's really all about time and keeping time. It, it, you can't rush great food, and so always set aside the appropriate amount of time to cook your food. If you want to rush your food, you're going to get a rushed palate, and that's really kind of the way it is. Same with the beer. They take time to make this beer. That's why it goes so well with the food. What's cowboy flavors? Uh, do, you, do you have some special herbs or things that you would put on a piece of meat? Oh, yeah. I, we, we've got our wild game rub, and our wild game rub is, is made up of guajillo chili, rosemary, thyme, coarse salt, black pepper, and also uh, 
we put a little bit of cumin in there that we toast. It's a great little rub. And actually, you know, not only is it good on meats, it's also good on chicken and fish. Heck, it's even good on the rim of a Bloody Mary, you know what I mean? So, but we like to add all that. We like to add all those intense flavors. And, and, and that's what makes these beers food beers, because they, they can really settle in with all those flavors. And now you have a book also, right? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Chef Tim Love on the Lonesome Dove Trail. And you have a website, ChefTimLove.com, ChefTimLove.com. Right? You can get all these recipes, along with all the information about all these beautiful beers, at ChefTimLove.com. Now, Mark, you have been knighted, right? Yes. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, it means that um, someone thought I know a little bit about beer. Now, it was um, bestowed an honorary title by the Confederation of Belgian Brewers, um, and I'm an honorary knight in the order of the masher. And the masher is a wooden fork they used to use to mix uh, the grain and the hot water. So I was whacked around the head with a wooden fork before so I could drink a, a beer, and I proudly can wear the medal <laughs> as a master beer sommelier from Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> You two so you can get you two can get whacked, Paul. <laughs> I, have been, I have been whacked. I have, I have been, I'm but did you get a medal, Paul? Did you get a medal? <laughs> That's good. Tell, tell us about the Aspen Food and Wine Festival. Well, what actually happens out there? Well, here at the Food and Wine Festival in Aspen, you've got uh, these large tents. They call them the Grand Tasting Tents, which is the center of the festival. It's got ten thousand people come through. You can probably taste about five thousand different wines, beers, and different spirits that are coming out. And people, you know, it's, it's a large tasting event. Then on top of that, there are multiple demos, cooking seminars, wine seminars, beer seminars. All, I mean, you can't even, I mean, can't fathom how much fun it is up here. And with a day like today, like we've got, the sun's shining. It's just spectacular. All right, last question for each one of you. So, Chef Tim Love, what's good news for you? What's good news for me? Yeah. Waking up every day, baby. That's good news for me. Okay, United <laughs> Mark. Uh, for, for me, it's discovering new people and new flavors. And just, it's great to meet all these people in Aspen. Just a, people who just want to try different things and just enjoy life, just enjoy food, and also enjoy their drink. I love it. Okay, guys, thanks so much, and have a, have a wonderful time, obviously. Cheers. To, uh, yeah, to cheers. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Cheers, Paul. Right.